Hello everyone, and welcome back to Game Dev with Drew. I've probably already hit 200 subscribers by now, but I'm gone in California as you guys are seeing this. Looking at colleges so I can go enjoy the college life in a year and a half. So, what I'm doing is I'm going to be teaching you guys how to code in GDScript because some people just copy down the code that they see and just see that it works and don't learn. So I'm going to teach you guys actually how to code in this. So let's get straight into it. So I'm using GDScript Playground, an amazing website made by someone who's awesome. I wish I could meet them. Um, you could also use Godot. But this is just going to be a little rundown of ver the very basics of coding. So first at the top is extends node. Node encapsulates every single thing inside of Godot. You can call upon a UI node. You can call upon a 3D space node. You can do anything within extends node. And then func underscore ready is a function that is run when Godot is first run. So when I run this, whatever comes is something that comes after ready because ready is only played at the first frame. So what I'm going to do is show you guys a little bit of coding. So the first thing that everyone learns is something called hello world. And what we're going to do is Godot, uh, GD script is very similar to something called Python. Python is a very simple programming language that has very big uh, usage. It's simple, it's easy to learn, but it's very difficult to master. And I'm I'm all right at Python, but I'm more of a C++ person myself. But I fell in love with GDScript because it's object-oriented, simple, and I love the game engine of Godot. So what Python has is something called a print function. And what print does is that it prints to the console. It literally just types out what you type out within the console. And GDScript has that same thing. So if you type out print, with two brackets, and then you put in two uh, parentheses and type in hello world with an exclamation point, and you run this, it's going to say hello world. The reason why it says hello world is because it prints out to a console that says hello world. Now let's get a little bit fishy. So since we have, since we can print strings, this is what this is called, something between two parentheses is called a string, why don't we make a variable? You guys remember in my videos, we have something called vi variables, and they're just things that can encapsulate something. So let's make a variable. So we have to de declare that it's a var, and you can just type var, and then we'll just call this variable a. And let's just make this variable equivalent to something called, you know, let's just give it an integer. Let's give it 5. So if we do var a, we, it, we can just do print a. And when we run it, it gives us hello world and 5, which is a. We can also just, you know, print out 5. And that'll do the same thing. But we can also change the variable. Say we want to make a equivalent to 10 now. So we can print a yet again. And it'll now be 10. So as you can see, as it goes down the line, it reads between every single line. As, so it sees that a is 5 at this point. So it prints 5. But since a is changed afterwards, it prints a yet again as 10 and honestly uh, GDScript and most programming programming languages are very smart you can just do like var b equals 10 and you can actually do uh, you can actually print uh, m multiplication or addition so we can just do a plus b and you can run it and you get 15 or you can do a times b and you can get 50 
GDScript is very smart in that it carries out equations. Some just append the others and you'll get like 510 if you do A plus B. But the way that Godot runs is that it's very mathematical. So that's the end of this video. This is just showing you guys how to print and use variables. And I'll see you all in the next video. Bye, everyone.